Hey everybody, Bungzi here with another ultralight review on ultralight backpacking. Today, we're taking a look at the carbon fiber trekking poles. That's not just what they are, that's actually what their product name is by z -Packs. Pretty generic name, but hey, it works. Now, my recommended trekking poles have always been and remain the LT5 three-piece carbon trekking poles by Gossamer Gear. So today I'm going to compare these two poles to give you some better context on both. Let's start with price. A pair of Z-Pax poles costs $99 while a pair of Gossamer Gear poles costs $195. That's a substantial price difference, practically double the price. Now, whether or not the selling points on the Gossamer Gear poles are compelling enough to warrant the added spend, that's entirely subjective. I'll let you make that call. But on price alone, Z-Pax is by far the winner. Let's now compare weight. A pair of Z-Pax poles with straps but without the baskets weigh 13.4 ounces on my scale. A pair of Gossamer Gear poles, same setup, with straps but without the baskets weigh 9.72 ounces on my scale. They are both incredibly light but the Gossamer Gear poles are crazy light and the runaway winner in the light AF category. Let's now consider the grips. Z-Pax offers their poles in either a foam grip or a cork grip, which costs extra. Many people swear by cork grips for comfort. I've tried both through the years and if anything, prefer foam, but that's just me. Comparing apples to apples though, foam to foam, I would say the foam grips feel just about the same. They are both contoured as well, though the Z-Pax grips might be a touch more contoured. If you're using your straps properly, which is a whole other topic, I'm not sure this difference is significant enough to notice though. As for the straps, while their design is very similar, I found the Gossamer Gear straps way more comfortable. In fact, I would go so far as to say I have a problem with the Z-Pax straps. They both have the same uh, cinching mechanisms, which is great. It's easy to tighten or loosen for that matter on the fly. Um, by far, this is my favorite strap design on the market. However, Z-Pax gets cute and adds a strip of flannel-like backing to one side of their straps. While this sounds like a good idea, it results in all kinds of additional stitching that is rough on the hands. It borders on uncomfortable. Does it lead to blisters? No, not in my experience, but it's definitely uncomfortable. It also complicates things. Because the backing is only on one side of the strap, that means there is a right way and a wrong way to wear the straps. So as you take your hands out of your straps, which of course happens countless times during the day, water, snacks, camera, whatever, you're regularly having to adjust the straps into their proper placement. This gets annoying. Gossamer Gear keeps it simple. Their strap material is extremely light and forgiving. I'm not sure this can come across adequately in the video, but it's much softer and more pliable than the Z-Pack strap material. And more importantly, there are zero stitches. They are super comfortable, even forgettable. You forget they're there, and there's no right side or wrong side to the strap. So, as it relates to overall grip and strap comfort, Gossamer Gear is the runaway winner. Relatively speaking, poor scores to Z-Packs on their straps. Now let's talk deployment. Z-Pax uses a clasp locking mechanism or flick lock as some other vendors call it, while Gossamer Gear uses a twist and lock mechanism. This is in part how Gossamer Gear achieves the lighter overall weight, by, by the way. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Most people prefer the clasp setup. It's more reliable in most cases as well as quicker and easier to deploy, no argument. While some twist and lock trekking poles are known to slowly slip and therefore shorten over the course of a day, I have not experienced this problem with the Gossamer Gear poles. Their twist and lock mechanisms are reliable in my experience, plus they don't seize up like some do. I've had this problem in the past. That being said, a clasp or flick lock will always deploy quicker and easier. No arguing that. While I fully acknowledge, all other factors aside, that flick lock is preferable over twist lock, I personally think this point needs to be kept in context. If you're using your trekking poles properly, which many people do not, they should be out and deployed from the beginning of your hike to the moment you climb back in your car. 
It's not like you're constantly taking out and putting away your poles. Another point, a relatively minor point, regarding setup. They both can be adjusted easily to accommodate various lengths based on your height as well as the terrain going uphill or downhill. Hill. However, the Gossamer gear settings are a little more simple. With Gossamer gear, the bottom segment is always deployed to the stopping point, and any height configurations just happen in the top segment. Genius. It's one of those, duh, why doesn't everyone do it like this? Ideas. Not the Z-Pax pole. With this pole, you have to make sure you set your height on both segments. Again, not a major point, but worth passing along. Now let's talk sturdiness. Hopefully this will come across well enough in this video, but the Gossamer gear poles are way, way more sturdy. You can see this in the bend, particularly in the bottom segment. This is critical because this is the segment most likely to break. Some people are harder on their trekking poles than others. If you're one of those folks, this might be the deciding factor for you. As light as the Gossamer gear poles are, they are also some of the sturdiest poles I've ever used and way more sturdy than the Z-Pax poles. Clear, clear advantage goes to Gossamer gear when it comes to sturdiness. Those are the main points, but there are two other, I don't know what to call them, X-factor variables I want to mention. One unique selling point of the Z-Pax poles is that they can extend further for use in supporting high-pitched tents, such as Z-Pax own Ultiplex tent. You may or may not care about this point. The Gossamer gear poles cannot extend long enough for a tent like this, though um, both work just fine with your typical trekking pole supported tents. The Ultiplex is pretty much a one of a kind. There are of course workarounds. Z-Pax themselves sells a trekking pole jack, as they call it, at 1.2 ounces uh, for this very purpose. You can also use two straps to overlap and connect two trekking poles together. I actually covered this topic in a review of mine where I compared the Z-Pax Ultiplex tent to their uh, Plexamid tent. I'll throw a link for you in the video description down below in case you want to check it out. The other X factor is noise. To say the Z-Pax trekking poles are noisy actually doesn't do it justice. They make a doing sound that eventually drove me batty. It sounds like you have a jug band following you down the trail. You know that mouth harp sound? You don't hear it all the time, but you do hear it a lot of the time. Here, enjoy. Just editing this video gave me PTSD. I can't quite explain this. It might not bother many of you at all. It drove me insane, listening to that sound all day. Frankly, I can no longer use these otherwise fine poles for that reason alone. So, there you have it. For the price, the Z-Pax trekking poles are alright. Though they may not be comfortable enough, durable enough, or quiet enough for some of you. If price isn't a deciding factor for you, or to put it differently, if you live by the philosophy of buy once, cry once, then the Gossamer Gear LT5s run away with this comparison in my books. Well, that's all the time I need. Let's make the dismount ultralight as well, so bye for now.